Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thanks for uh, staying here so late on the final day of the conference. Um, my name is Bick Lee, and today I'd like to tell you about uh, Arlon, an open source tool that um, I hope I'll convince uh, will make your lives uh, significantly simpler, especially if you work in DevOps or platform engineering and uh, you manage many uh, Kubernetes deployments and also the applications that run on them. So the key part of this talk, uh, I hope, is going to be an interactive demo. That's the, uh, I think, the, the fun part of the, this talk. And uh, we're going to uh, finalize this with some conclusions. And if uh, there's time at the end, I can hang out for any questions that you might have. So before we go any further, uh, a brief word about myself. Um, I spent my whole career working on containers and virtualization management. Uh, I currently am a, a full-time maintainer on the Arlon project. And prior to that, I worked at Platform 9 as a co-founder and chief architect, and where uh, we built uh, OpenStack and Kubernetes management products. And prior to that, I spent many, many years at VMware doing uh, virtualization. So let's talk about the problem today. So as many of you know, Kubernetes has become the de facto platform for running modern applications. But as Kubernetes has become more pervasive, you see it running in more and more diverse environments such as um, edge devices, right? And this leads to a multiplication of the number of clusters and applications that you need to manage and those can reach you know, the hundreds or even thousands. And it's really difficult to manage all of those deployments using traditional methods. And so what you really need is strong central management. And one of the challenges that many people face is the tool set and the APIs for managing Kubernetes clusters and the content that runs on the clusters is disjoint and inconsistent. So for example, many users uh, deploy or they use a tool like Terraform or EKS Cuddle to first provision a cluster. But then they have to wait for the cluster to come up and that could take 10, 15, 20 minutes. And then they need to grab a cube config for that cluster and stick it somewhere else for another tool to consume in order to finally start deploying applications, right? So there's a lot of sequential dependency here and wait loops and an inconsistent API across. This problem gets even worse when you talk about configuration sprawl. When you have so many objects that you need to manage in settings and configurations, you want to, uh, for example, share a lot of settings and distribute them across many deployments. But once in a while, you'll have a cluster here or an application there that needs a slightly different setting, right? And that's hard to manage. And what many people will do is just copy and paste some YAMLs and make some uh, targeted changes. But this really breaks when you talk about updates, right? So change management is also a big problem where you want to be able to make a small number of changes, but then propagate them to a large number of deployments while still maintaining those um, uh, individual specific customizations. This is a hard problem. So that is why uh, we built Arlon, to try to alleviate some of those issues. So let me walk you through some of the building principles of this tool. So the idea here is Arlon unifies the API and the object model for clusters and content running in clusters, such as you know, RBAC rules, uh, Kubernetes policies, and applications, of course. So in Arlon, clusters and apps are first class objects. And they're fully declarative style um, resources that run within a Kubernetes API framework. What this means is using a single kubectl apply command, you can deploy 
many, many clusters, and the content that will run on those clusters all in one shot, right? So this is fire and forget. It's fully declarative. You specify it once, you specify the desired state, and Arlon with its underlying tool chain will take care of the rest. That's really a powerful idea. And Arlon embraces GitOps internally it uses a GitOps deployment engine to deploy manifests. But since its API and its resources themselves are fully declarative uh, Kubernetes objects, you can put those objects in Git and rely on a tool like Flux and Argo CD to manage them. In order to address the sprawl problem for configuration, a key concept in Arlon is profiles. Everything you, that you do involves uh, profiles, which are really uh, a way to group related sets of settings and applications into reusable units. So for example, we have cluster profiles, which we also call cluster templates. And you can clone many workload clusters from a single template. And we have app profiles that let you group uh, a bunch of related applications together. And you can also make custom um, changes for one or more uh, deployments. And those customizations will survive updates. So Arlon has a powerful mechanism that we call linked updates. And that means you can make a set of changes to a template or a profile, and they will all get sent to the deployments that use those profiles. Okay, and we're gonna take a look at some examples. In order to implement all of this uh, feature set, Arlon doesn't try to reinvent the wheel. It rests on the shoulders of existing giants that are well known in the community and are very good at uh, what they do. So Arlon is built on top of a stack of tools for uh, the deployment of manifests, Arlon uses Argo CD. Um, and for expressing and orchestrating cluster provisioning, Arlon lets you choose between uh, either using cluster API manifests or cross-plane. And Arlon also uses other tools that are well known, such as Customize and Helm. So how do you install Arlon? So the um, there's lots of instructions that you can find in the repo. But basically, you need a Kubernetes cluster that's dedicated and serves as a management cluster. And it's the same cluster that you typically use to host the other tools that Arlon depends on. For example, Argo CD and uh, cluster API or cross-plane. Now, we offer um, command line tools that allow you to um, automate the setup of this management cluster. And if you do that, this is something uh, that you end up with um, based on this picture. So on the left side is your management cluster. And it's kind of busy, but really what you need to understand here is it hosts all of your APIs and controllers. And Arlon is going to add its own custom resource definitions and its own controllers. You also need a Git repo because we're going to use GitOps uh, operations heavily. So all of your templates, application sources, profiles are going to be defined in Git. And once all of this is set up, Arlon will help you deploy many, many workload clusters which are shown on the right side. So let's talk about some of the core principles in um, the Arlon object model. First of all, you have applications, right? Since we're using GitOps principles, in general, your application sources will live in Git or a Helm repository like this. And to make those known to Arlon, you will create Arlon apps, which are just pointers to those locations, right? So in this example, we have Guestbook and Nginx, which point to uh, directories in Git, and we also have Redis, which is pointing to a location in a Helm repository. Once you do this, 
you can organize your apps by grouping them into profiles. So for example, we can put guestbook in the blue profile and the other two in the red profile. And the way you use profiles is that's how you're going to specify what applications to deploy to clusters. Okay, and I'm going to talk about that next. So clusters, in Arlon, workload clusters are cloned from something that is shared and that you um, store in Git. We call this the template or the cluster template. And in this example, we're going to deploy three workload clusters that are all linked to the same cluster template. And in this example, it's EKS managed mpool, which is an EKS cluster uh, with a managed node group, okay? So all three workload clusters will be exact identical copies of the template, except that they'll ha have unique names. However, you can also specify on a per cluster basis some surgical changes that you want to override. So Arlon lets you specify customization patches. Uh, for example, cluster two might use the same template, but you might want to change the region in which it is deployed. Same thing for cluster three. Now last but not least, how do you specify what applications are going to be deployed in every cluster? For that, we're going to use an annotation on every cluster. And so for the demo I'm going to use, all clusters will start out with the same set of profiles, which is the blue and the red profile, okay? So initially, they're all going to get the same set of apps. So I think we're ready for the demo. And uh, this is a live demo, so I hope the demo gods are with me. So I'm gonna show you um, uh, provisioning from A to Z. Uh, we're going to deploy clusters with apps, and we're going to look at many update scenarios and show you how powerful the update mechanism is in Arlon. And if we have time, I'll show you Teardown as well. Okay, so let's switch here. Um, I hope you can see this. This shows you uh, the management cluster. Um, and it has um, many namespaces that are already there. Uh, Argo CD is installed, Arlon is installed, and um, we also have several namespaces that are used by the cluster API uh, system. And if I look at the CRDs, you can see the data types, uh, the custom resources that Arlon has um, installed. So let's look at a, an example of um, the manifest that we're going to deploy. So I have a folder here with a bunch of manifests that we're going to apply. So we have the applications, there's three of them, Guestbook, Redis, and Nginx. Next we define two app profiles, blue and red. Okay, so blue gets Guestbook, red gets the other two. And then we have clusters. So we're going to deploy cluster one, cluster two, cluster three, and they're all identical except that cluster two and three, in addition to just consuming the template, which is here, they also specify a patch. This is what I was talking about earlier. This is the override. So the template by default will def uh, deploy the cluster into the uh, Ohio region. So for cluster two, we're saying we want this to go into California. And then the next one, we want it to go into um, Oregon, I think, okay? Let me show you what the manifest looks like for the cluster template. This is a cluster API manifest, if you've uh, never seen one. and um, it's uh, going to deploy a Kubernetes cluster of version 1.22 by default, okay? Now since 
Um, the deployment uh, will take 10 to 15 minutes. What I did was capture a video of this first phase for you um, a few hours earlier. So let me see if I have this video. So this is what happens when you um, apply the folder. So as you can see, we are creating two app profiles, three apps, and three clusters, okay? Now what I'm showing here is the Argo CD UI, since Arlon is using Argo as its deployment engine. Each of these boxes, it's called an Argo CD app, but because Arlon also has a concept of app, let's use a different term, I call these deployment units, okay? So you have a live view of the deployment units that we are creating, or Arlon is creating. And since we're creating three workload clusters, we end up with six of those boxes. And the reason is there's two boxes per cluster. So if you look at cluster one, for example, cluster one, that uh, deployment unit contains the, a copy of the template that describes the shape of cluster one. There's a companion unit called cluster one dash Arlon, which contains resources that are needed to support the life cycle of cluster one. So for example, cluster one is a manifest, but it needs to live in a namespace so that it's isolated from other um, uh, cluster deployments. And that namespace resource is provided by the cluster one dash Arlon deployment unit. I hope that makes sense. <clears throat> so what's happening in the background here is um, the cluster provisioning engine is um, deploying the cluster to Amazon in this case. And Arlon is monitoring the progress of that. And as soon as that cluster comes up and is available, Arlon will automatically register that cluster with Argo CD, which is the same tool that we're using here, and then proceed to the next stage, which is to deploy the applications that we specified using the app profiles, okay? So after a while, you're gonna see a bunch of new boxes suddenly appearing here. So we're going to fast forward, let's see. So in a moment, you're gonna see a brand new set of um, deployment units being created automatically. And there's gonna be one per app per cluster. There you go, okay? So clusters two and three just came up. So now you see a bunch of applications coming up for those clusters. And cluster one is gonna follow shortly. All right? So now we've completed um, the initial deployment phase, and I'm going to go to a live, a live view of the um, Argo CD UI. Okay, so this is the real thing, okay? So now that we have all of this, one thing I want to mention is the way you distinguish the applications from the clusters is any application gets this naming convention, which is the cluster name, app, and then the name of the app. Okay, so what can we do now? I'm gonna show you several um, live update scenarios. And uh, the first one I'm gonna show you is, remember that we specify the apps on a cluster through this annotation. I'm gonna show you this annotation. So, if we look at cluster one only, okay? So cluster one has three apps as expected. If I look at the OEML for cluster one, this is the profile I was talking about, okay? Blue and red. So what if we change the annotation to remove red. Remember that red currently um, holds 
Redis and Nginx, I believe. So let me run this. You can see that two apps got deleted automatically. And this is happening to all clusters, not just cluster one, okay? Because the other clusters are also using, no, I'm, I'm sorry. This is only happening to cluster one because we are modifying the annotation of cluster one only. Now, what happens if we completely remove the annotation? Then the final app goes away, okay? So let's restore the annotation, and those apps come back. Now let's get to what I was saying earlier. You can also change the composition of a profile by editing it live, and this will have an effect, an immediate effect on all clusters that are using the profile. So for example, if I were to edit the red app profile, it's very simple, it's just uh, a list of, um, uh, of app names. So let's filter this based on all the Redis ones. So you can see that clusters one, two, and three have Redis. If I just delete this from the app profile, they're all gone. Okay, so live updates of uh, profiles um, have an immediate effect. Let me show you um, updating an application source. So let's say we looked at Nginx on cluster one, and Nginx manifest is currently living in Git, and let me show you the manifest for Nginx. So it's a stateful set, okay? Um, let's maybe change replicas to three. And let's do a diff, okay? So we're going to commit this change and get um, bump replicas to three. And then let's Push, let's see what happens. And immediately, you'll see that the stateful set controller has detected the change through Arlon and Argo CD and has scaled the deployment to three pods. Okay, and last but not least, the most powerful and impactful type of update that you can perform is actually cluster upgrades. So imagine you have 100 clusters deployed in many um, edge locations, and they're all centrally specified through a single template, and you want to upgrade all of those Kubernetes uh, clusters to a newer version. So how would that work? You would uh, go to the manifest that we're using, and let's see, we want to go to version 23, 123. Okay, so, oops, let's do a commit. Bump case version to 123. And before I do that, pay attention to the boxes labeled cluster one, cluster two and three, I think they're all on the left here. What you're gonna see is, is as soon as I commit it and push the change, uh, those will refresh after a while and then they'll flicker from green to yellow and back to green. Um, let's see. There you go, it's happening pretty fast. So what's happening here is we've sent a signal to the cluster API subsystem that we, do, we want the new desired version to be 123. Even though it's showing as green, 
what's actually happening is the upgrade is in progress right now, okay? And the way you can confirm that is to go to the Amazon console, and you can see that it's showing the control plane of the cluster at version one to two, uh, but if you do a refresh, let's see. It's saying updating, right? So we've triggered the potentially large scale update. And last but not least, it's also very important that we be able to clean up all the resources that we've created whenever we want. And since everything is fully declarative and everything is a first class Kubernetes object, you can just do a cube cuddle apply, sorry, a delete of the whole folder and it will, um, Arlon will orchestrate the uh, cleanup of all of those resources. And that'll take a while, okay? So I hope that this kind of give you a, a taste of what this tool is capable of. And um, so we've shown um, a unification of the API and the tool set and methodology for managing clusters and applications. We looked at profiles on how they help you address the problem of configuration sprawl. And we've also looked at how Arlon offers this very powerful linked update mechanism where uh, you can make small changes to a set of shared profiles and cluster templates and have those changes propagate to all of your deployments while preserving any customizations that you may have specified. For more details, uh, feel free to uh, visit the repo. Um, there's a Slack um, uh, channel if you have questions. And of course, you can contact uh, myself and uh, any of the maintainers. I hope this was useful to you. And I'm going to uh, maybe take a few questions if we have time. Thank you very much.